let's talk a little bit about uh, what we've been doing. Uh, so none of you are familiar with our, our previous incarnation, uh, the Warden Interactive Media Initiative. Uh, so Remy, alas, is no longer with us. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the transition, but first let's talk about kind of who we are and what this customer analytics thing is, is all about. So the main reason we moved away from Wimmy is that it became a victim of its own success. Is that we were doing so well in the interactive media space, we started getting inquiries from companies who said, we want to work with you guys. We like the, the, the data-oriented perspectives you have. We want to tap into the global network of researchers that you've assembled. But we're not a media company. And so uh, by broadening our scope to open it up to pharmaceuticals, financial services, uh, uh, nonprofits, and so on, uh, it was like flipping a switch. And all of a sudden, major companies in each of those other sectors are coming to us saying, at last, now we can do something together. Uh, and so it's been a, it was a, a natural change to make. And of course, on that list includes interactive media. So, it's still fair to say that that's at the top of the list. That it's probably those kinds of companies that have maybe the coolest data, the most data, the most interest in, in sharing with us and, and our research network. So it is purely broadening the scope pretty much to any company that has detailed customer level data. So let me now talk just a little bit about some of the differences. Uh, just because many of you were aware of what we were doing with Wimmy, uh, we appreciate all the help we had across the school with it. So what does it all mean? Well, again, we're putting data front and center, quite literally. It gives us a chance to work much more broadly. So we're not turning our backs on any of the projects that we've done. Again, interactive media is still a really cool area of customer analytics. Uh, and Eric's going to talk a little bit about a couple of those projects. But they're just as well with our new name as they did with our old name. But one of the issues is what we want to get rid of. Which is to say there are a lot of companies coming to us, and even students who are coming here, interactive media, that's what I want to do. But they weren't interested in the day-to-day -day <coughs> aspects. So they'd say, what, what courses are you offering on this? And we would talk about these data-driven kinds of courses that, that, that I'm teaching, and that Eric and Elliot are teaching, and other colleagues around here are doing. Uh, and they'd say, well, that's, that's not what I had in mind. Uh, uh, and so we want to avoid those kinds of misperceptions. So there's a lot of interesting non-data-driven media stuff going on out there. And there's plenty of other schools that are focusing on it. Um, we have our focus. Uh, we really believe in it. We are playing to our strength really, really well. So, so these are the kinds of things we're doing. But uh, I, one of the things that, that's really important is to talk about what these words really mean, custom analytics. Uh, in, in, in a way, there isn't yet a formal definition for it. We want to create it. And let me help you understand what we mean by custom analytics and what we don't mean by custom analytics but by way of example. So firms are out there collecting information about what their customers are doing over time. And there's a number of different firms doing it. Uh, maybe the, the fastest growing, the most visible uh, of such firms would be Google. Mm -hmm. right? Not only are they collecting all the data, uh, but they have this, this Google Analytics package. It's free, and it lets you know uh, what's going on on your website. Uh, so it gives you all, all kinds of different dashboard information about the, the, the number of visitors and so on. Okay. So, so Google is terrific. Uh, to date, it might be fair to say that the, the, the 900 pound gorilla in the customer analytics space, it's hard to see from this tiny little screenshot, but it's a company called Omniture. So what Omniture does is they put little tabs on every page on your website so you know exactly the path that people are following, not just how many people visited this page, but where else they visited, what other kinds of behaviors they might have manifested, what offers they might have responded to. And so they're doing that with a lot of different companies right now. Uh, many of you might be familiar with Comscore. We have a very nice relationship with them. They use a very different kind of technology where they have a, a, a panel of, of hundreds of thousands of households where they track all the, uh, basically they have an ISP, and so they know all the information coming down the pipes that will eventually show up on that person's computer. So different technologies, but again, the ability to track customers at an individual level. All three of these examples would be third parties but many firms can do this themselves, either scraping the data off of their own website or looking at data from, from other websites that are directly talking about them. And of course, one big example there would be Facebook. So you could, you could scrape Facebook to find all the activity uh, by people who, who, who like your company or, or in some way have, uh, have made comments about it. And of course, other, a lot of other examples like that that companies can do on their own. So we want to work with lots of different data sources 
But at the same time, I want to suggest that one of these things is not like the others. Okay? One of these things just doesn't belong. Okay? Again, all cool data sources, but one of them, and perhaps you, you won't be able to identify just from what Little have said, doesn't fit within our space. Okay? And that would be Google Analytics. We love Google. We're having lots of very healthy conversations with them. Where we're very glad to, to send students in that direction. Uh, and as good as Google Analytics is for many firms to track at an aggregate level what's going on there, that's the problem with it. All the Google Analytics data is, is rolled up. And it's impossible to get the kind of granular data that you can get through these other sources. So we're drawing a very, very bright line that unless we can get data on individuals, however you define them, doing things over time, then that's nice to know stuff, but it's not the kind of project that we're going to take on. So we're not going to help a company by saying, here's total advertising exposures, here's total sales in different regions, what's the relationship between the two? Is that an interesting question? Absolutely. But we believe that the future, the, the, the future for the whole economy as at this more granular level. We want to help companies justify the decisions to make that move, to, to get the more granular data, and to show them the extraordinary value they could get from it that they couldn't necessarily get uh, from more rolled up data of this sort. Uh, and again, very, very broadly defined. Uh, here we seem to be focusing on examples that are kind of tipping towards the online space. And there's no question that, that uh, anything digital is a great way to do the tracking, but it is not limited to that. As long as it could be, you know, a, a, a little card that people bring into your store that you punch holes in it when, when they buy sandwiches or, or whatever. As long as you can do that kind of tracking uh, and you have good questions to ask about it, then uh, there's a conversation for us to have. So let me uh, now step away a little bit from just what custom analytics is. Bigger picture. Custom analytics would be part of this, this broader interest in, in business analytics as a whole. So there's lots of people writing books about it. So many of you might be familiar with the Davenport and Harris books, competing on analytics. Think about how many firms have completely transformed their businesses or built businesses in the first place around different kinds of analytics. Now again, that's a little bit broader than the granular customer analytics, but it all fits together fairly well. Uh, and so we're trying to uh, kind of ride that wave and, and bring a little bit more clarity to the different flavors of analytics, so recognizing that customer analytics is just one part of it. Uh, it was great to see that in the announcements uh, for the new MBA curriculum, uh, we as a school made this big deal that analytics is going to be a part of it. Uh, and, and we're taking that word very, very seriously. We're, we're, we basically came up with the uh, announcement for the Wharton Customer Analytics Initiative within hours of, of Wharton announcing the new curriculum. Uh, and, and, well, between us it's a coincidence. But <laughs> then everyone else, we say it's all uh, uh, wonderfully synced up. One of the things that we wanted to do all along, every time we come up with a research center idea, is we want to have a student concentration around it. Doing so for interactive media was very, very difficult. Impossible to get faculty to teach in it. Uh, not necessarily getting the right kinds of students that we wanted. Whereas there already exists a wonderful list of courses in marketing, in open, in statistics, and elsewhere. So we don't really have to do anything other than to string together existing assets and put a label over it. Uh, and that's already been happening, uh, as we'll cover. And again, building bridges across all of Penn. So we've been having some nice conversations, in particular with the folks uh, over in, in, in the engineering school. Uh, basically to take all these brilliant young students who like to build things and analyze data, but they're not quite sure what they're going to do with it, and kind of pull them over here uh, get the best of both worlds. Uh, uh, Ali has just a, a wonderful team of undergrads, again, from across campus, who are working uh, as, as true research assistants for us, not just looking stuff up in the library or data entry, but really, really building models that we're sharing with the corporate partners. For them, it's just like the greatest experience that, that they'll ever have at Penn. Uh, not only doing it, but then learning from each other. So we have these lab group meetings where we bring all these undergrads together, uh, and we just, just marvel at their enthusiasm, their resourcefulness, and, and that, that's, uh, speaking for myself, something I've aspired to do for, for a quarter century here, have just this group of undergrads all around. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's happening. So uh, we, one of the reasons we stayed with interactive media is because we thought that's the only way to bring students in. 
we had been surprised. The students were always surprised by the students in a really good way. Uh, they're reading the books. They're understanding what's going on. So we had an event just this past Monday on uh, for the MBA students on you know custom analytics and you courses you should take, jobs you might consider. Room was full, and it wasn't only just the food. The food was good, okay, but but uh, it really was the content as well. So there, there's interest there. So we can again play to our strength. The students will come to us, and. That's what we want. We're going to be interested in our research. We're going to be interested in our activities. We don't have to be a different person when we're interacting with the students than when we're in our office uh, doing the research. Just a, a much better fit. So uh, firms are looking for it, and, and, and really largely thanks to Nicole. Uh, we're going out there and telling these companies that besides hiring you know, a, a traditional marketing person or a supply chain person, you need a customer analytics person. So shaping the kinds of positions uh, that these companies are looking for, shaping the kinds of companies that are coming to campus, and shaping the preferences of our students in terms of the jobs, companies, industries that they want to go after. So we're making it all happen. It's riskier in a way, as opposed to just kind of riding the wave of interactive media being you know, the end school to be doing stuff like that. We're, we're kind of alone in this way, taking a gamble, but we all believe in it. We did a lot of, a lot of soul searching about it this fall. Uh, we believe that the demand is really there. We believe that we have the capabilities and resources full speed ahead. Uh, another big issue is, is that there's a, a natural desire among the Wharton faculty to be doing things in this space, taking the kinds of data, uh, asking and answering the kinds of questions that, that we've been working with. Uh, it wasn't as easy with interactive media. And so we have th th this built-in infrastructure of faculty courses and so on. So again, in parallel to everything that we've been doing with our customer analytics, uh, our friends in the open department have launched a business analytics concentration for undergraduates. Our initial inclination was to say, darn, they're stealing our idea. But we looked at the list of courses that they're accounting towards, including some marketing courses, exactly the same set, in fact, a better set than the ones that we can make with ourselves, and we're thinking, this is terrific. The fact that other departments are doing this kind of thing on their own uh, means that there's, there's clearly built-in supply for it. We believed all along, but this is now validation, that there's also built-in demand for it among the students. There's many, many students who are coming here wanting to do something quantitative. They're not sure exactly what. That's why they're coming to Wharton. They naturally gravitate towards finance, and that's great. It's a terrific area to be doing quantitative work, but it's not necessarily the only one. And so we want to give people a viable alternative, and maybe best of all, we find ways to tie in uh, the coursework they're doing, maybe the, 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 the research or the jobs they're pursuing in, in finance and accounting with customer analytics. I think it all fits together very well. So here's a, a number of our corporate partners. Uh, we just signed Sirius XM a satellite radio yesterday. We have some uh, very advanced conversations going on with firms, as I mentioned, in financial services, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, and uh, across the data-driven universe right now. Uh, and, and when we go to these companies, we don't want them to think of us as a replacement for a consulting firm. We don't want to be answering those short-term kinds of questions for them. We want to help them identify the monsters in the closet, pull them out, embrace them, and, and, and help them really go to, to a whole new level, and not just answering tactical kinds of questions. Our biggest corporate partner of all is Omnicom, which is a, a one of the two behemoth uh, 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 ad agency holding companies, about a thousand different agencies and other entities under the Omnicom umbrella. We work very closely with them, and in particular with their clients. So we're helping some of the firms, as you can see, IKEA, Lowe's, Visa, and so on, all the way around, uh, uh, identify and, and, and resolve those, those, those really big, uh, hairy, data-driven kinds of problems. 